Since I was a kid, I always enjoyed aquariums. When I was 12, I got a fish tank in my bedroom and I always had a fish tank since then. In every single room I was in, I had a fish tank. Even until I had my own house, at that point I could actually choose which room to put the fish tank, so that was pretty cool. It wasn't until I was in college that the connection of aquariums and teaching took place. While I was in college, I was constantly still setting up aquariums, whether it was like for some dad's birthday, or for a business, or somebody would call me and ask them to come over and look at their tank, and I was just constantly helping people set up tanks. And I was getting better and better at explaining the tanks, and how they work, and how the fish work, and I actually enjoyed helping people with that. And Eventually, I met a guy named John Swanson. He's a marine science teacher at EO Smith in Mansfield. And I went into his classroom, and his classroom was just littered with tanks everywhere, with just fish. And I was like, that's what I want to do. That's it. And since then, I've been trying to get to this point of having a marine aquarium in the classroom that the kids built and that the kids maintain. Um, saltwater tanks are very expensive. The tank itself was a tank that I had. The live rock is my own live rock that's been sitting in my garage for a really long time. So that part of it was easy. Um, it's the equipment itself that can be really expensive and you want to have high quality equipment that is reliable. You don't want to get like used equipment that could have leaks. You don't want to have pipes that could break because when you have an aquarium in the classroom and something breaks on like Saturday morning, you're going to come in Monday morning to an apocalypse. So I applied for a grant through the West Hartford Foundation and once we had some funds to start the aquarium, everything started to take off. We got tons of different sponsors. Um, Apex Neptune System gave us a huge discount for the brains of the tank that control everything that's plugged in and control the times and help us monitor everything that's going on. Tropic Marine donated all the salt that we have in this tank. The salt can really be expensive and Tropic Marine makes really high quality salt so that was really good. Um, Carib Sea donated all the sand that we have in both the, the uh, aquarium here and as well as in the mangrove tank. Um, and then uh, Wet Pets gave us a bunch of corals, gave us discount on fish and corals, gave us some food and they even drove here to deliver the fish and there's been hobbyists all around the state ha that, have, that are going to be donating corals to the tank as well. So there's been so much help from both people in the district and out of the district. Marine Science is a one semester science elective course taught by Mr. Wasley at Hall High School. Marine Science students are heavily involved with the aquariums in the class. One of Mr. Wasley's goals is to rarely, if ever, have to work on the aquariums himself. Each student in the classroom is assigned a specific aquarium job to keep everything in check with the corals and fish. There are about 40 jobs assigned from feeding the fish to aquascaping the aquarium, to testing the water, to cleaning the equipment and water changes. Some jobs are daily while others are once a week or once every other week, depending on their need and amount of time they take. Students help fundraise for fish and corals. Twice a year, the marine science students and others host Super Smash Brothers tournaments. Students participate in the tournaments by paying a donation to the Coral Project. Baked goods are sold as well. Students this year also sold LED light bulbs with the Shining Solutions fundraising program. Mr. Wasley's Honors Earth Science students participated as well and his classes earned about $1,000. Students kept track of the money they earned through the fundraiser and got to sponsor different fish for the aquarium and give them their official name. Students were very excited to be able to name the fish. So I got to use the silicone to glue the baffles in um, and this is something that I'm good at and I do this at work so I was happy to help. Alright so I worked on the placement and maintenance of the corals so we feed them reefroids and phytoplankton two times a week and uh, we observe like any changes that uh, might be apparent. So if they're like if their polyps aren't extended, or if they're like discolored, or if they're they seem deflated, um, then maybe we'll move around the placement. Uh, I learned that some corals like to be higher and lower in the tank. Some of them respond negatively towards the strong current, and uh, some of them also respond negatively towards the uh, 
the strong light, some like uh, dark light, and um, so we'll move them around based on how they respond to the different um, changes in the environment. All right, so to keep this tank clean, we have set up this sump. It is a four stage sump, and so the water enters through these pipes into the first stage, which is filter socks. These socks filter out any large material so it doesn't get trapped anywhere else. Um, it goes under this wall through this protein skimmer. The protein skimmer skims out any organic material. Then it goes over this wall through the live rock which skims out more bacteria and stuff. And back there you can see that there's four probes. They're for salinity, temperature, ORP, and pH. After it goes through the live rock, it jumps this wall and goes through the bubble trap. This is so that no air bubbles get sucked back up in, into the tank. Uh, so the, there's two pumps in here, two returning pumps. One of them goes back to the main tank and the other one goes to our mangrove tank. This is the mangrove tank. We have about 18 mangroves. Um, the purpose of the mangroves are to absorb nutrients from the tank, from the system. Um, all of their roots are in the sand, which absorb nutrients from fish and coral waste. Okay, this is our Apex Fusion's Neptune system. This is the energy bar, which is um, the power outlet for all the um, different pieces of equipment in the Neptune systems. It also is connected with the fan and the automatic feeder. This is the aqua bus, which is connected to all the probes. It acts as the brains for the whole system. It makes decisions based on the information it receives from the probes. And it's connected to the computer through the ethernet cable so that um, the whole system can be tr controlled online from anywhere. This is the dose. It is connected to two different tanks. It has an alkalinity and calcium tank. And then this is the breakout box. It's connected to this tank of water here and um, there's the float inside the sump. So when water evaporates, it tells the pump to turn on and it's our automatic top off system. Coral reefs across the world are dying due to climate change, ocean acidification, and humans removing the corals from aquarium trade. Although humans physically removing the corals makes the smallest impact of problems compared to climate change and ocean acidification, it is still a trade that can be limited and prevented. The purpose of the Hall High School Coral Project is to bring animals like corals as well as reef fish into the eyes and hands of students in West Hartford while at the same time minimizing the amount of corals being pulled from the ocean. Corals from the aquarium will be obtained by aquarium, hobbyist, donors, or aquacultured corals at local fish stores. In addition, students will grow, frag, and give corals to local hobbyists and stores in order to limit their amount of corals being pulled from the ocean. This teaches students at Hall High School a deep understanding of the work involved in order to preserve ecosystems while bringing awareness of what corals look like and how they behave. The interactions of students between the corals and fish as well as the live streamed YouTube channel of the aquarium exposes countless people to the wonderful yet fragile ecosystem that seems so far away from us.